Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna round out our three-part series on creating a kind of endless runner style hover racer game with a procedurally generated track and a floating origin. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can trigger the spawning of new track pieces as the player progresses. We're gonna do this using events. Let's check it out. So what we can see, if you watch, as I transition, there it just happened, if you watch the scene view, as I move into a new piece of track, a new one gets spawned on that is connected. Now that resetting is that there's another one. The resetting that you're seeing where the kind of camera moves is the resetting of the floating origin that we're using here. Oh, I'm so bad at driving. Um, but what you can see, is that as we pass through, there we go, I just passed through it again. As we pass through um, these invisible trigger colliders, there's one. As we pass through these invisible trigger colliders, it adds a new track piece at the end. It all, there we go, we see some of them disappearing. It also adds a countdown, which will cause some of the previous pieces uh, to be deactivated and disappear. So let's take a look at how this is being done. It's really simple. If we open our south to north track prefab here, we'll see, and I should actually make this exit trigger bigger because now it's definitely possible for the player to pass through it without triggering it. I'm not too worried about it because we will eventually hit one. But basically, if it passes through this invisible box, it's gonna call a function in this trigger exit script, and we have a delay here for how long we're gonna wait before we deactivate the piece that this is attached to. So let's just take a look at this. So nice, simple script here. We have a public field for our delay, and then we have these two public variables. First for a delegate called exit action, and then a public static event called on chunk exited. We also have a private Boolean to check if we have exited yet, right? It defaults to false. And basically what we're doing is in our on trigger exit function here. So this is a function that's part of Unity and it's basically when a collider leaves a trigger. So it gets inside the trigger, it enters it, and then it leaves it again. And then we're passing in a parameter, a reference to the collider that exited the trigger called other. So here I have an empty script attached to my car called car tag. It had just a little debug function in here that, that I'm currently commenting out to see what we collided in what we collided with to see what we collided with. And basically we're checking, is that car tag present with the thing that exited the trigger, right? Then we know it is the car. And then we say, okay, if the car tag does not equal null, meaning we successfully got that component, then we're gonna check, has anything exited yet? No, it hasn't. Then we're gonna set exited to equal true. And then we're gonna raise this on chunk exited event. So that's this event that we declared here. And basically what this is gonna do is allow us to raise an event that can be detected by anything in our project that subscribes to that event. Now, if you watch the level layout generator video, you will have noticed that our level layout generator in on enable subscribes to this event. So we say trigger exit dot on chunk exited plus equals pick and spawn chunk. So this is going to trigger this function, pick and spawn a new chunk of our level every time this on chunk exited event is raised. And we're gonna raise it here inside this conditional. And then we're gonna start a coroutine, wait and deactivate. So a coroutine, if you don't know what it is, right? It's a function that allows you to delay execution of code. So here we say yield, return new wait for seconds delay. That's the number of seconds we specified in the inspector, which is 30. I'm gonna say, okay, wait for 30 seconds then execute this 
line of code. So transform.root.gameObject.setActiveFalse. So find the uppermost game object in my hierarchy, the prefab that's holding the whole level chunk, and just set active to false. Deactivate it, right? Turn it off. So it's actually pretty simple. So I think that the interesting parts of this are mainly the use of events here, right? If you haven't used events, they're a pretty clean way to have objects in your game communicate that you don't want to be too tightly coupled. You could also use a static singleton as another approach, but I thought here, since we're gonna have lots of track pieces and we all want them to be able to communicate back to the level chunk layout component, and we only are ever gonna have one thing triggering exits of tracks, right? This would be different if we had multiple players, we would probably handle it differently, but in this case, there's only one player, it just needs to say, okay, a chunk was exited, please spawn another one, and it's nice and simple. So, really simple little script, but hopefully it gives you some ideas for your own projects. And I've put all the code for this project up on GitHub, you can download it for free. All the assets are open source. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or any suggestions for other types of content to do on the channel. I'm always interested to hear from you guys. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it and please do consider subscribing if you're enjoying the content on the channel and ringing the notification bell so you can actually be notified when videos come out. As always, I really appreciate you guys spending time with me and thanks for watching.